In the previous video, I talked a lot on why it was so important to find the inner product the way it was. The inner product for real vectors is the dot product. The inner product for the complex vectors is the Hermitian product. And I emphasized it had to do with that positive definite condition that when you take the, the inner product of a vector with itself, this cannot equal zero unless, of course, you know, V was the zero vector itself. That's the only exception to that rule, the positive definite condition. Let me show you why we want the positive definite condition. Um, with an inner product, we can define something called the length of the vector, or more commonly in linear algebra, it's called the norm of the vector. In which case, it's gonna be denoted as you take your vector and you write, uh, in this case, like a double absolute value. Some people actually use absolute value symbols. Uh, you see that in practice, that's perfectly fine. Um, for us here, we're going to use double absolute values to describe the norm, the length of the vector. And it really is meant to describe how long a vector is. Remember, we kind of first thought of vectors as these arrows in space. And like the length of that vector, that is what we're trying to describe right now as its norm. And we use we can define the norm using this inner product. Uh, so in fact, the norm of a vector is defined to be the square root of v dot v, which when v is a real a vector, that's just the usual dot product. When V is a complex vector, it's going to be the Hermitian product. And so if V is just a column vector in Fn, where Fn is either Rn or Cn, then the, the dot product with itself is to produce this sum, V1 squared plus V2 squared plus V3 squared all the way down to Vn squared, where the entries of V are V1, V2, up to Vn, right? And then you put that inside the square root. Great. That gives us the length of the vector, the norm of the vector. If a vector's norm happens to be 1, we call this a unit vector. It's a vector of length one. Unit vectors will be very important for us. Um, also, a, a nice thing to mention here, and we use this identity all the time, is if you take a vector dot itself, this is equal to the square of its norm. That's just taking this equation and squaring both sides. Now, one important property you should know about norms is the following, that if you take the norm of a scalar product, this is equal to the scalar times the norm. Although you do have to take the absolute value of that when it's a when it's a real number. If C were, of course, were a complex number, when you talk about the norm here of C, the, the absolute value, uh, well, let's pretend this is some complex number, right? So it looks like A plus BI. In that situation, the norm, the, the scalar there is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. Or in other words, this is just equal to A plus BI times a minus bi. So it's the product of the complex number with its conjugate. This is the exact, this, this is uh, this is a generalization of the absolute value. It's sometimes called the modulus of the complex number or the norm of the complex number. And so in, when you take absolute values of complex numbers, you're talking about this modulus, this norm of the complex number. Be aware of that. And so this property right here is really one of the critical observations when it comes to the norm. In fact, in general linear algebra, any vector space which has a function that basically behaves like this, it has the positive definite condition, it has this multiplicative property with scalar multiplication, you also need the triangle inequality, then that's what we call a normed vector space. Uh, we can construct norm vector spaces using inner products. If a vector space has an inner product, we call it an inner product space, and that leads to this norm vector space, uh, which we're going to see these uh, for for our vector spaces here. So let's just do an example in R4. So if you have the vector 1, 0, 2, negative 2, then the length of the vector, we calculate its norm. Uh, this is going to look like v dot v, v dot v inside the square root. And so you just take the product of the elements with itself. So you're going to get 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus 2 times 2 plus negative 2 times negative 2. Uh, which in case you're going to get a sum of squares, you're going to get 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 4. And so that's usually how you do these calculations. So if you want to take the product, uh, you're just going to sum up the squares of the entries there inside of a square root. That adds up to be the square root of 9. And so the length of this vector turns out to be 3. Oftentimes when you compute the length of a vector, you're going to get some irrational number like the square root of 7 or whatever. Uh, I want to show you, though, that by the multiplicative property we saw just a moment ago, this one right here, it should be true that if I take one third times the vector v right here, um, by the multiplicative property, this should equal the absolute value of one third times the norm of v, which the absolute value of one third is one third, and the norm of v turned out to be three, this should equal one. And therefore, we would have that the vector one third v, this is gonna be a unit vector. 
It has length one. And I would encourage you to check this on your own here. If we take, you know, if you just add a third to all of these things, you're going to see that, in fact, its length will be one. You're going to get one ninth plus zero plus four ninths plus four ninths all inside the square root. That adds up to be one. Take the square root, you get one. All right, I told you to do it yourself, but I just did it. There you go. Uh, if And this is something we can actually do in general, right? So given any non-zero vector, so if V, if V, is a non-zero vector, then its so-called normalization, its normalization, which would look like one over the norm of V times V. So the norm of a vector is a scalar. One over that scalar would also be a scalar. So this is just a scalar multiple of V. Its normalization, uh, this is going to be the unit vector the unit vector, so it has a length one. It's the unit vector in the so-called same direction. The same direction as V itself. Now, direction is a very geometric idea here. What does direction mean? Well, geometrically, or at least from the linear algebra perspective, what we're trying to say is if you have some vector V, right, uh, that vector will naturally span uh, a one-dimensional subspace, which we call a line, and any other vector which spans that same line, we would say is in the same direction. And so if we had our vector, let's say the original vector V was really long like this, uh, the unit, its normalization, which is a unit vector, we're just saying, oh, we're going to take a smaller version of that, but now its, it's length is one. Uh, and so that's the normalization. We're going to see later in this chapter the importance of normalizing vectors. Uh, but I want to, before I conclude this video, I want to do a norm, a norm calculation using a complex vector. Things are a little bit different, but not by much, right? When it comes to computing the norm, this is going to be the square root of u dot u. Now, the most common mistake when people compute inner products of complex vectors is they forget that the inner product is not always the dot product probably because they focus on real vectors so often. The Hermitian product is what we use for complex vectors. So the Hermitian product would look like one plus I bar times one plus I, and then you add to that I bar times I, uh, just, that's just the number I, not, it's not a vector. And then you're gonna get three minus I bar times three minus I. And this sits inside of a square root. For which case then, um, you're going to take conjugates of these things. You're going to get 1 minus i times 1 plus i. You're going to get negative i times i plus, then you're going to get 3 plus i times 3 minus i. This all is inside the square root. Then you have to foil this stuff out. It seems like it's painful, but one thing to remember with complex numbers is if ever you have a complex number a plus bi and you multiply by its conjugate a minus bi, when you FOIL that thing out, you're going to get an A squared, you're going to get a negative ABI, you're going to get a positive ABI, and then you're going to get a negative B squared, I squared. Well, things to remember is that the negative ABI will cancel with the positive BI, ABI, and then I squared itself is equal to negative 1, which will cancel with this negative. So when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you always get A squared plus B squared, the sum of the squares of its real part and imaginary part. And so as such, if I was computing uh, the norm of this vector, I would skip all of this stuff right here. And I would jump when I calculate the norm to the following, I'm gonna get the square root of one squared plus one squared. So looking at the sum of squares of the first part, then you're gonna get a one squared from the one, from the I right there. And you, you're not gonna have any I's, so that's the important thing there. And then, so like this was our first part, the second part, and if you don't like the second part there, let me write it like this, zero squared plus one squared, if you insist upon it. And then for the last one, you're gonna get a three squared plus a one squared from this part right here. The signs don't matter. This is all gonna be positive when we're done, three squared plus one squared. And so then we compute this thing. Uh, so what do we have? We have a lot of ones, right? So we get one plus one plus one, that's a three plus one, that's a four. And then three squared is nine. So we end up with the square root of 13 when we're done with this thing. And that would then be the, the length, the norm of this complex vector.
uh, it'll be a real number. There won't be any eyes. They will all cancel out through the process because all these conjugations. Again, that's why we use the conjugate transpose when we define the Hermitian product because by using conjugates, this will guarantee that the final result is going to be a positive real number.